Kenny Boyd is back in the playoffs as the top seed from 10-5A after securing the district championship for a second straight year. And Coach Casey Osborne joins us now. And Casey, how do you compare this team to last year's team at this time entering the playoffs? Uh, I think there is a, a lot of uh, strong comparisons. Um, we're playing, I think, the, stiff, the system a little bit better this year uh, within the system, more of a purpose attack. Uh, defending and midfield play. I think all around it's just a little bit sharper. Uh, last year it was more of a athleticism style and more direct. Uh, this year I, I think we're playing a better soccer at this point in time. And like I said, just more with the purpose. Um, looks a lot better, looks a lot dangerous, uh, more dangerous I guess I should say, and uh, just a lot, lot more refined, I think. Casey, your team ranked fourth in the area, according to the Dallas Morning News, 11th in the state, according to ESPN's rankings. And like you said the last time you were here, this is all new for Boyd. And yeah, the extra attention is nice, but it's also nice that your team has been able to focus on what's going on on the field, their business on the field, as opposed to getting caught up in those rankings. Exactly. And we, we fluctuated up and down in those rankings. You know, um, the boys throughout it all, I think, have kept a pretty level head. Um, and we try to, you know, acknowledge it, embrace it. At the same time, it doesn't mean anything if you don't get results, and I think they understand that. And, um, you know, you just got to keep motivating yourself. You, you know, fortunately, I guess you could say fortunately, we haven't been that number one seed, so we haven't had that giant, ginormous pressure on us. But at the same time, we've, uh, we've handled success in the rankings with success on the field, I think, pretty well. You went 12-2 and two in district play, both losses in a shootout, one against Naaman Forest and one against South Garland this past Friday. When you had the district championship well in hand, you rested several of your regulars. What did you like most about how your team performed in the district season? I liked the fact that we battled through adversity. Um, losing starters to injury um, was, was detrimental to, it could have been detrimental to this team, but we fought through it. Um, different guys stepped up. Um, and like I said, just really fine-tune the whole system of play um, from the back line to the keeper to, the, to our forwards to our midfield, everything just really gelled. There's a good cohesion out there, um, good camaraderie, uh, camaraderie and uh, the, the team just the team as a, as a unit just played very well, I thought. So. Like we said, you closed the regular season with a shootout loss to South Garland. Nobody scored in regulation. Again, you didn't have much of your regulars on the field. You wanted to give them some rest. The game before, no shortage of goals. Beat Rowlett handily, 5 nothing. Sewell Yost came through with a hat trick. And this is a guy who was moved from the midfield a year ago to forward this season. He's really delivered for his 12 goals on the season. Yeah, Yost has, has, has done an excellent job, especially here lately. Uh, you talk about those injuries. We had our leading goal scorer go down, um, and Ryan Trainer, and and we needed you know Grayson and Sewell to kind of pick up some slack, and they both did an excellent job. You know Sewell was on the stat sheet, but kind of at the bottom tier of it. And as soon as you know Trainer went down, I think he recognized the need that his game needed to elevate, and it did. He's uh, getting separation and, and executing in the attacking third doing an outstanding job for us, now becoming a very big threat for other guys to key on, which benefits Grayson, which benefits our other forward, which benefits our midfield, because Yost is going to get double team, sometimes triple teamed in games, and then Grayson is going to benefit. Well, if they choose to pick Grayson, then, you know, Yost is going to make them play, so pay. Um, so very, very, I knew Yost had it in him, you know, but uh, I'm very pleased with it. It didn't surprise me. It's just nice to see that his hard work is starting to pay off. And, He's getting results, finding the back of the net. You bring up Ryan Trainer's name. He was becoming one of your better midfielders on this team. Uh, it, and before he suffered a leg injury that will force him to miss the rest of the season. You got the word just recently that he will not be able to join you if you reached a certain round in the playoffs. Uh, what does that mean now that you, you know you won't have him for the rest of the season? You know, the mindset really doesn't, doesn't change. We're not going to change anything systematically. It was bad news because Ryan's such a great kid and a great player for us. Um, so it's, it's, it's tough to hear that, especially, you know, he wanted to be a part of the success on the field. But knowing Ryan, he's going he's gonna to still come to practice and be a good motivator and probably, you know, a, a, our fourth coach or our fifth coach, whatever it may be. 
Um, but it really doesn't change anything. We knew that you know when one man goes down, another one has to step up, and we've done that uh, this year over and over again. And we haven't had trainer the past, I think, three or four games, so we've kind of gotten a little bit acclimated of not having him. Um, and so it's good for you know somebody else to step up and you know take some ownership and maybe uh, secure a starting role. I know Jared Lacey has come in and, and done a good job of providing some midfield depth, so we could release Gupton into the attacking portion where, where trainer would usually fulfill his role. So it's it's good for those young guys or whoever it may be to come in and say, you know what, one's down, but we can you know not replace him as a as a person, but definitely replace his output. Hopefully, there have been several leaders who have helped glue this team together as you fight through adversity. One of them on the back line, Dylan Farrell, who has meant so much to this team as a consistent force uh, as a defender. Dylan's just outstanding. He's, he's, he's a team player through and through. He's a coach's, coach's dream, a coach's pleasure, a coach's player. He really is. And, um, and on top of that, he's very, very good. Uh, so he's got all the tools. I'm really excited. He's just a junior about what he can do going forward for us. And, uh, He's so uh, uh, versatile in, in his playing style. He can play in several positions, which is really hard to do at this level, at this high level of soccer, uh, that, you know, the competition we're going to be playing against. So very pleased with his progress, very pleased with what he's doing. He's shut down defender and uh, couldn't be happier that he's on my team. As you're trying to replace trainer, somebody who can give you some scoring pop, hey, look at Raul Serrano, what he's done as an attacking midfielder. How much does he mean to your group? Raul's huge as well. I mean, he's, he's a captain, and he's done a very good job here lately of, of giving us a midfield uh, scoring presence, uh, buffering the attack, if you will. And he's got one of the best shots around from outside the 18 area, so he's really starting to zone in on that, trying to get separation, uh, getting good looks and executing those looks. and. Um, the main thing with Raul is, and you know, we sat him down and talked to him, is he had to become more of a physical presence. He's not the biggest guy on the field, but he needed to challenge more, and he definitely stepped it up in that area. And been very proud and pleased with how he's starting to win the air battle in the midfield and get a little bit more physical, um, because with our system of play, we need that. We got to have that in the midfield, and he's done a good job of answering that uh, that call and doing well for us. Casey, your team put together nine shutouts in 14 district games. We know that Austin Butler seized that goalkeeper position late in non-district. He's become your guy there. Did you think that he and the rest of your defense could be that good in the district season? I, I knew we could. I really did. Uh, I knew Butler was going to make the saves they needed to set, uh, make, and I knew that our back line was going to protect him as much as they could. We, you know, we've had nine shutouts. It should have been realistically 13 or 14 of, of all district games. You know, we, we, we let up those goals. Uh, the other teams earned them, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, those are mistakes that we normally didn't make. And um, I knew we could be that potent, but I thought we'd be even more potent. I thought we'd have over 10 shutouts. That was one of our goals as a team, to have over 10. So that was a little disappointing. But at the end of the day, we knew what we did wrong. It was easy to chop up and fix on film and, and, and training sessions. And, and it's not Butler's fault. It's, it was a cohesion of the back line moving. And, I'm telling you, when you're replacing parts as much as we did, we kind of, you know, we hated to say it, but we were going to expect a couple goals. But uh, we'd like to get a little bit over 10 on our, our shutouts. But, the, you know, at the end of the day, I'll take 9 out of 14, too. So. You enter as the top seed from your district in the Class 5A playoffs. You know you'll play the fourth seed from District 9 5A. That's to be determined here early this week. You know you'll be playing next Tuesday at John Clark Field in Plano. What do you want to shore up this week as you get prepared for the first round? We need to get healthy this week. We need to we need to get some rest, which is, you know, not ideal, but it is ideal that we have a week off, um, and we need to keep it as routine as possible. We're we're a big routine team. I'm a big routine coach, so we're going to try to go through this like we're playing two games a week. Try to treat the atmosphere like we're playing two games this week as much as we can. Obviously, we can't recre recreate that, but. Uh, We'll probably train hard two days to simulate game activities and you know have a recovery on Wednesday as we normally do. Um, at the same time, because of the week off, we're gonna we're gonna sit some guys for two or three days and just get them in the ice bath, get them on a get them in a physical therapy, get them into the training room and try to you know heal up some soreness and some bangs that we got. And you know it came at a good time. You know we've got to be mentally strong this week to overcome taking them you know basically ten days off before we play again. But uh, Hopefully it'll be great for us to, to heal some guys and uh, relax just a little bit before we make a, you know, hopefully a strong run. 
Here in your second year as Boyd's coach, it seems like a major emphasis of yours is to make each season better than the last. And if you look strictly at the postseason, it's awfully hard to top what you did last year going to the fourth round. Uh, I'm sure matchups are a big part of this, but how do you surpass or, or duplicate that playoff run from a year ago? Um, you know, there's a lot of elements that go into it. You know, not always does the best team win the game, but um, I think the mentally prepared team has the best advantage. And so we're, you know, we're also going to take this week to get mentally prepared and, you know, know our opponents going into each game. Um, you have to be good, you have to be on point, and you have to execute. At the end of the day, you're going to also need breaks, you know, hoping that you don't get a PK called against you or, a, you know, a, we call them bad goals when the ball just drops in the box and someone toe pokes it in or in those situations. And you got to be precise on set pieces from long balls coming in to big throws to corners. So we're going to focus on the stoppages of play quite a bit. And, you know, just continue to grind out. The effort has to be there. There's so many elements, you know, we could talk about that for a while. But uh, at the end of the day, we have to perform. We have to get breaks and we got to get healthy. Casey, we appreciate the time. Best of luck. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Casey Osborne, head coach of the Boyd Broncos. They went to the regional semifinals a year ago, and they feel like they can go even farther this year. The playoffs begin next Tuesday in Plano at John Clark Field.